Uh, all right, the time is now 6.30, members present, uh, Brandon Lang remotely, Harry, Kim, Dave, Don, and Charles Myers, absent uh, Guy Othry. We have a quorum. I call the meeting of the Public Works Committee to order. Uh, first item on the agenda are minutes from 7.22. Are there any corrections? that people would like to offer to the minutes. Hearing none, but some wonderful music, I accept <laughs> the minutes as authored. Next item on our agenda, the capital budget. Uh, operating. Oh, uh, oh yeah, you're right, operating budget. My eyes skipped down one for some reason. Sure, yeah, 2025 operating budget. Um, all right. Sure. Uh, and so we've seen most of this before. In the meantime, uh, staff have been working with me on uh, reviewing the current 2024 budget year to date. And uh, that revealed a few other things that we ought to be looking at for next year. So I went ahead and updated this and added them in here too. It's nothing really significant. One of the things we're looking at is um, proposing just removing both the revenue and the expense for the county's uh, peer side weed, lake weed collection program. We had that budgeted this past year, but it didn't end up getting used. Uh, it turned out the some neighbors seem to have wanted it, but not all of the neighbors wanted it. So we just didn't do it. And we'll continue to pick those up uh, along the street on Middleton Beach Road on occasion. Um, but just remove that then from the operating budget since we're not using it anyway. It's net neutral in terms of cost. So I, I uh, don't know if there were any questions from any committee members paging through this um, that we could focus on in particular, but again, most of it you've seen already. And if not, uh, this will be turned into finance staff on Friday, uh, or by Friday, I should say it that way. That's when it's due um, as part of our overall operating budget. This is just the decision items part of it. So everything else that had been approved in 2024 will automatically be the base of 2025. And then these changes kind of get considered and discussed one by one. So for the leads from peers, uh, mm -hmm. that the uh, removing the uh, revenue and uh, the uh, expense, that's net neutral. Um, are we charging for weed collection currently for the neighbors who use it? Yeah, we're just considering it leaf collection if it's street side, so our crew is just picking that up. Um, if the county did it, Peerside, they would charge us. Okay. That's what we were going to assess. I'm not sure it's quite net neutral in that situation, but... Um, in terms of a cost I can identify, yeah. it is. It's In terms of the budget, right? Yeah. It does have a cost to go pick stuff up. Yeah. I can't tell you incrementally what it is compared to overall citywide leaf collection, for instance. Don't. So it's treated the same as leaf collection at, at, in the fall of people cleaning the uh, Well, it's more of a summer service. So we run out, I don't know, Brad, with a small dump truck or a heavy duty pickup truck and just fork things into that. You know, because we're not out in the middle of summer picking up leaves. Right. We're treating it like that. Oh, okay. So, so we are, do have staff time. It does take staff time. It does take a vehicle to go do that. How yes. often is it, Sean? I don't know. Uh, do you know, Brad, if that's a couple times a summer? Maybe once a month, if that. Okay, okay so maybe like three times or something. 
Yeah. Maybe if that's, that's a, <clears throat> that's a heavy year. Uh, this year we haven't gone and collected anything so far. So okay. it would just fall under that leaf clock, like just whatever the, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of like time. Yeah. You know, if, if we're not filling potholes, we're picking up weeds. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't think worry about it. you don't even need a motion on this. Is that correct? Uh, typically, the committee just endorses it. Yeah. In, in terms of or changes it uh, and says, let's get that turned in. I just like to leave, make sure we leave the door open to you. If you ever felt this became a burden on staff time and trucks and, you know, where we said you have to say, well, the county really should be doing this. Oh. We viewed it more as it'd be, frankly, one more thing for staff to do to run this program because uh, the proposal was if you can get the county to do it, you can send out, you know, 70 assessment bills for that cost. So and your staff has to actually sit and put that together. Right. Which takes, right. That's going to take some staff time to sit Administrative out. staff time to and sort it out. And, and they'll all be pretty small. Yeah, I, 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 so it it seemed like the kind of thing we were willing to do if that's what the city wanted to do, um, but it turned out we couldn't get consensus or unanimity among Middleton Beach Road residents that they all wanted to do that, and we weren't in a position to say, well, we're going to demand that you do that. So. Any potential that this might change before Friday? If we uh, give oh, you our... that particular element would be oh no 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 risk. not that element the whole thing oh uh, I think the risk is very very low we've already scoured the budget and we're pretty much done as yeah. staff I remember we saw last last week. I have to put this all in a different format but this was easy for me to uh, both track and reorganize. So if I made a motion uh, we as a committee endorse this document is that what you're after? I, yeah, that would be appropriate. So moved. <laughs> well, second. Oh, seconded. All right, Kim, you can have it. Seconded. I'm taking Kim. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Moved by Don, seconded by Kim. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes 6 0. On to our next item, the capital budget. <laughs> yeah. And so here also, we have seen this before and suggested at our last meeting some reordering of a few projects. Um, similar, but I had a better way to track it in the capital budget. There were a couple things that I added that were not in the previous one. So when you see a blank in these, Public Works Committee priority columns. That means you haven't seen it yet. Uh, and one of those was Pleasant View Road reconstruction. This wouldn't be any extra money or new money. This would just be whatever WISTA doesn't get around to billing us by the end of 24. In TIF funding, uh, we're asked to specifically reauthorize that money instead of carrying it over like our general fund capital budget does. So this is just carrying forward um, some of the money that's already allocated this year. Similarly, the county highway uh, bridge replacement project, we had budgeted for property acquisition that'll be needed for that project, but we haven't started that yet. Uh, we're still in preliminary design right now. So I added that in, those are both in TIF. Uh, and then just kind of aging down here a minute. I think that's it for the road project stuff. In the non-road project stuff, I completely missed that we're working on design this year for reconfiguring the intersection of Century and Allen. So we'll want to budget for its construction next year. And I'm suggesting that now to the committee someplace between priorities six and seven. It's entirely open for uh, moving around. And then... 
Also, we uh, went and took a closer look at the rail crossing repairs. So even though that was pretty lowly ranked, uh, we're now proposing deferring those to future years instead. So that would just come out of the budget entirely. And then for vehicles, we had already seen all of these. This was introduced at the last meeting. So there were a couple new things that aren't really new. And one thing we're talking about just skipping. Sean, where's, where's the cutoff? Like we're like, I know we don't know for sure because it goes to finance and they kind of sure. rework things, but in general. Each bucket is a little bit different. Uh, the, the one that's relatively well understood among the council is uh, for road projects, yeah. $2 million. That's the target. Yeah. Uh, it changes a little bit, but that's the target. For everything that gets considered other there was a really informal and very flexible number of $100,000 floated years ago. Uh, so we've kind of been using that, but more than that, we've been just trying to put things in mm -hmm. order so that when council has to draw a line, they know where the line goes. Yeah. Um, and even at that, sometimes things have been pulled up if they're a relatively low dollar amount, where the finance yeah. and personnel committee and or common council might just say, you know what, this is important to us. Let's bring it up and put it in. Uh, and that's certainly doable. They just want our opinion on order. The yeah. vehicles hasn't had any sort of target other than, uh, in, I would say, generally to discourage them. Yeah. The uh... Allen Century intersection change that is currently in design. So that Correct. is more or less a $400,000 placeholder because we really don't know what that's going to cost. Yeah, we, we only have a preliminary figure from the designer. Mm -hmm. So is the county tipping in on that at all? Yes, part of this will be so reversible. or Well, it's this is actually several projects thrown together that's and true. the county's funding is a different percentage depending on which part of that sub project we're looking at. So for con construction of the physical improvements of the intersection, 50-50. For some of the signal stuff, it's 75-25. Because okay. three of those legs are county roads and only one is a local road. Ellen. And then part of it is over by uh, Highway Q and Highway Q. M um, instead. So. And, and Lake Street got thrown into the mix, but only in a preliminary design sense. Sure. So, yeah, we're, we're, uh, it's hard to say. Same thing here. You just need our concurrence, or, or do we need a motion to approve it? Uh, Before we get that far. It yeah. gets to the order as much as anything, but yes. I'd like, I'd like to certainly reorder items 9 and 10. And have the Old Creek Pheasant Branch be nine at least. Where is that? Are you under road projects or what? Where? Yep. Capital budget, oh, street. Trade center. Okay. okay. So, mm -hmm. streets? In terms of, um, it just seems like, you know, this has been on the radar for a really long time. They've put an awful lot of work into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never heard any discussion about Elmwood um, brought before, you know, this group while I've been around or. Oh, it has a lot of. It, 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 it Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, and it was there's, very intense. Yes. yes. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm like. Did they, do, did they do already like a preliminary neighborhood survey? Mm -hmm. and Sean, I'm not sure where that is. That that kind of we had like, they did a temporary study with the traffic circle and there was a lot yeah. of neighborhood involvement in that piece. I think it came in um, nearly when we were repaving Elmwood Avenue. Uh, as as a, a hoped for kind of thing, like, oh, could you just add this into that project? But there wasn't really time to get in touch with the neighbors or run through a process. Because when I look back at, you know, my transit committee brought it up in, I think, December of 2022, but it was too late to put in a budget request for 2020. When's the first time this ever was brought to public works or the city? Uh, Elmwood, Elmwood yeah. part. I think at the same time as the Elmwood Avenue so resurfacing. Project. 
Because this group, you know, they've been asking for traffic calming and work going back 10 years on Old Creek specifically through that corridor. Went through all the city correspondence and found stuff predating me to other older yeah. and, and I'm just, you know, representing them, their interests, their voice in this. And so if um, I, I suspect, I know I get it, Elmwood is more prominent, has more visibility. It's, it's a main road that is used through the corridor of the city, but that shouldn't necessarily give it that level of prominence when there's a group of people who've been asking for, you know, action along this area for probably so five years. Would you go back and make that statement again that you want this because it is your district? Absolutely. Okay. I'm here to I'm here to represent people in my district. No, you're here to yeah. be on this committee. Well, but I'm a voice of the community and that's why they're they show up at the meeting. Yeah. And what is a designated bicycle corridor in the city? Mm -hmm. It currently has no signage, no bike lanes, no infrastructure to support that, no traffic calming. And it's designated as the bicycle corridor east, west, south of University Avenue on all of our plan maps. Sure. People do rides through it. It's well, then I, I just want then for the record, at least this uh, commission to um, just make that clear to the residents of that area that this is going to be ranked and held at this level. And I'm fine with that. I just want it to be clear that I'm supporting that we move it up and the rest of the commission wants to keep it at number 10. So that's up to the committee. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I, was, yeah. I would say, I yeah, I would definitely want to keep it higher in priority, just given the citizen engagement efforts and like, to your point, Charles, like the the bicycle the corridors and there was a lot, a lot of discussion about it. Yeah. So the concern with this is with the red tail development, it's going to be increased traffic to that whole area. It's just going to be all through Old Creek, all down Pheasant Ranch, and the whole corridor there. And so they're also trying to, um, you know, get get on top of that and get out of that as well. Where Elmwood's Elmwood, it's static. It's not going to change. There's no development going on. It is what it is. It's a nice wide street. Um, these are pretty narrow streets and corridors up there. So there's no sidewalk on Old Creek Road. Um, or Pheasant Branch. Or Pheasant Branch. And Pheasant Branch is used by bicyclists a lot. It has blind corners and, you know, hills to it. So, 25 miles an hour, but you can 25 that we've already shown in the preliminary study of this area. Um, it's a major feed area. You know, that's where the conservancy is, the bike paths are. I ride Elmwood, um, Elmwood regularly on my bicycle and Pheasant Branch. I would say Pheasant Branch and Old Creek are far more hazardous to bicyclists and pedestrians than Elmwood would be because it has sidewalks and it's a wider street. And it's a given too, it's a city street, it's a community street, whereas Pheasant Branch is not. What is it? It's not. I consider it almost rural, actually. Yeah. No curb and gutter, no sidewalk, no capabilities to even put curb and gutter and sidewalk in. Correct. And that's why we want some calming in there. I feel like it needs to be redesigned. I don't know what calming would really do necessarily. Mm -hmm. It seems yeah, like we redesigned that in, I want to say 2004, but it had curb and gutter and bike lanes as part of the design. Mm -hmm. And it was then not funded by the city because mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. was a real, um, Two camps got set up. Like we should, we should make this more of a urban cross section, and the other one was no, no. We need to leave it a rural cross section. Uh, and so, yeah. the Public Works Committee insisted that the design be an urban cross section, but the funding then was not supported for that. Charles Brandon has his hand up too. Oh, sorry, Brandon. Yeah, I was just going to say I. I uh, I commute on Elmwood Avenue every day by bike or scooter, and um, 
I, it's, I know it's recently paved, but I feel like there's not a lot of traffic on that street. And that's just my own one data point opinion on that. I kind of agree with David on, on that old Creek road. Um, in my opinion would, should be prioritized higher. That's, that's all I wanted to add, but I, I will admit I was, I'm, I've only been on the committee six months or so, or eight months now. So I may not have gotten all of the, the input that the other part, other members of the committee received on Elmwood Avenue earlier. They're both 25? Uh, round numbers. Yeah. They're very placeholder-y, I'll say. We don't really know what their scope yeah, is. Yeah, probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference if we change them or not. You know, I'm okay. If we want to change it, change it. I'll go along with that. Okay. We will have the front porch sitters on Elmwood and visiting. I don't, yeah, I was get funded. I think we should keep it as it is. <laughs> I'm also in favor of keeping it as it is. I feel like we get more pedestrian and bike traffic coming up and down Elmwood. Mm -hmm. There's, if we're, if we're there's in kids it, going to school, walking to school. Like there's just, there's all, there was a lot, a lot of input from the neighborhood there. Yeah, I, I also just, I, I, very candidly, I do not like having one of our designated bicycle corridors with absolutely no indication aside from a city map that it is a designated bicycle corridor. It does have signage. I think we added that recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been there a long time. Share the road. Just share the road. Yeah. There's a yeah. On, on uh, Pheasant Branch. Pheasant Branch. You're talking yeah, about I'm talking about Elmwood. On Elmwood, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. Which, is, which is a designated bicycle corridor for okay. south of University Avenue, east-west. We yeah. have- Yeah, it is. Um, there was talk. I know Mark Opitz was talking yeah. about adding bike we right. should sign yeah it. and we should do that at a minimum anyway although that's outside the scope of yeah this conversation this. um but the, these both were really intended to bring in a consultant to finish these processes because they've just been languishing mm -hmm. yeah I, i'd support the order as is Well, it seems we... evenly split. Do we want to make a motion and have a vote then on that? And, and I take it that the proposal is to switch the order of nine and ten. Is that what, correct? That's, that's all. Can you, okay. and you can you scroll up, Sean? What is sure. the what are the higher priority items? Just trying to see, like, okay. all the way to one. Let's start from the top and just run down. Uh, so these are in TIFF. If if yep. you don't mind, let's just put a pin in those for yep. now. Um, so street surface treatment. We always try to do is a really high priority because it is by far the best bang for our buck in road maintenance. Yeah. Um, keep good things good. Then there's resurfacing, which is kind of our next step. We can get a lot of lane miles for relatively fewer dollars. Uh, the soil testing, soil or pavement corings for the following year, we put in as sort of that uh, partner project. Then we've got our major reconstruction project that we're designing this year for reconstruction next year. And again, a large part of it is to get rid of water main from the 1950s. That's uh, just at the end of its life. The next two are designed for following year construction. So that's why their dollar amounts are relatively lower. Just get those into the pipeline. And then we get into the intersection and traffic calming so stuff. This one would be for construction of some physical intersection changes at the intersection of Park and Elmwood. That's being designed right now. Uh, and then the other two, like I say, would be to bring in a consultant to uh, finish up the neighborhood traffic management program. So a quarter of a million dollars to just do design work on that intersection. Nope, this would be for physical construction of, oh. say, a raised crosswalk yeah. okay. and drainage improvements that go with it. So of those three options, I think there's three, I can't remember, or alternatives, I should say. That's yeah. It's, yep. it's just saying X amount of money could cover any one of those yeah, I think this was the more expensive of the three. Um, 
the others weren't too far behind, but Ped Bike Transit, as I understand it, just voted for, I want to say, raised crosswalks. I've got that on a future yeah, agenda to bring to this committee uh, now that they've made a recommendation. So it's just a dollar. It's a, a placeholder. A this is for construction. Yep. Okay. For construction. Go. And there's nothing below that, Sean? Uh, not in the streets sub part. Okay, in the streets, we usually get budgeted... Two million, two million dollars, and right now it adds up to two point three. I want to say, yeah, two. So two hundred eight thousand dollars over. If you were to take items nine and ten off, that's fifty thousand dollars. That's Nothing. that's not a deal breaker from a budgeting standpoint. Mm -hmm. It really is. It really boils down to, is there something large that you know council well, would. It's would probably really this quarter million dollars realistically. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. How long has it been? Two million, Sean? Three years? Uh, I want to say since 2017. That long? Seven? Since, yeah, getting on seven or so into eight years. inflation wise, we're definitely not keeping we're up. way behind with inflation, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but then with the revenue side, we probably right. the revenue gets sucked up everywhere else. Well, we don't have any, we have minimal net new construction revenue in the city right now. So it's you know, we're there aren't really enormous pots of money coming in. Well, and there are a couple of things going. I mean, there's dollars, but there's also staff time, and they're both limitations. Mm -hmm. So even if the council were to say, eh, we'll give you $3 million, that doesn't mean I can spend it, because uh, at some point I just run out of time. So is it compromised? Nice you know that you had it. <laughs> the other thing I just wanted to add to the thing is that like, I know the citizens were like, because... Um, to get to school, they have to walk or bus in that area. I mean, walk, we don't have a bus option, so the walk or yeah. bike. So I would say that's the other thing is like kids are commuting to school in that area. I'm not sure how many kids are on Pheasant Branch biking, right? So I just think that like well, there's part a of your school yard too. down South so, Avenue. So there's a there's an actual manager. Well, I know that, but I'm talking there. about like traffic calming so they can like bike on that road on Elmwood. So let me ask a question. If they're going to lop off 250 somewhere, they'll probably go at 8, 9, and 10. If we were to take 8 and move it to 10 and move 9 and 10 up to above it. Uh, yeah, that's entirely up to the committee. I mean, yeah, we were just trying to rank it. I know. But and... That, to me, would give it an option of both traffic calming things going through as opposed to none. Yeah. And that way we're doing all the onward construction in one year. I like that right. approach. Yeah. Could you say it again, Don? What was your take opinion? item number 10 and move it to eight and then bring eight and nine down to nine and ten. So both traffic comings get moved up. And we give city council the option of, oh, there's 250. We can just not do that this year. <laughs> and then we'll have the study back on Elmwood's traffic calming yep. and we'll be able to do that and the intersection in the same budgetary here. Yeah. It'd be good. Yeah. Okay. So so it's move this move eight to, to seven, seven, and seven move nine and five. ten up to eight yeah. and nine. Nine becomes yeah nine becomes eight ten, ten becomes, becomes nine and eight becomes ten. ten. Oh so basically move eight down to the bottom of right. the list. Yes. Right. That's it. Let's keep it simple. I'll make that sure. motion. How's that? I'll make that motion. I have a question about that before I make the motion. If the design work began though in 2024, aren't we? Did we already spend money on this? Yes. So now we're going to not do this till 2026? Potentially, yeah. yes. But we'd also be doing it at the same time as the remainder of the Elmwood traffic calming that the study comes back with. So we'd be saving some money there. Yeah, you could roll the traffic calming into that project. That's right. Yeah, we could we could roll the findings of the study that we're yeah. ordering into that project. It's a construction of it. Yeah. yeah. It's more efficient. Yeah. No, I think that leaves us a bit of Except that we're so the design already started though. And so then we're like for, pausing. That's done all the time here. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's not terribly work. abnormal that something mm -hmm. sits on the shelf. In fact, Clark Street and Lee Street was designed two or three years ago. We haven't funded its construction. It's still a valid design, but we're not building it. And then in 26, we can move forward, prioritize appropriately based on the studies that we have. Because mm -hmm. we're saying likely that is going to get chopped off the 20, the, the number, item well, number eight. I wouldn't hazard a guess as to where the council ends up with it, but mm -hmm. we'll have given them our advice and that's all they asked. They can figure the rest. They may it. go with the whole thing. Yeah. Which yeah. would shock me. <laughs> it would be nice if we got yeah. our road yeah. funding raised for once. Yeah. Well, again. Yeah. It used to be a million. Yeah. Before it went up in 17. And some years closer to zero. Than yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then so, mayors started to run on doing roads. <laughs> the, the, the point right now is to make this eight, nine, ten. Yes. Okay. Well, I'd still like it to Old Creek to be eight and Elmwood to be nine. And <laughs> my motion was not to do that. So it hasn't been seconded. I will second Don's motion. Can you repeat the order again? Sure. Okay. So, so this would be eight. This would be nine. And this would be 10. So it's basically just take eight and move it to the bottom of the list. Okay. So I'll second this motion and then we can no. discuss. Oh, Charles, I, Charles. I seconded the motion. Okay, yes. then we can discuss it. Okay. All right. So the discussion point is I just want to reorder the um, Elmwood Avenue calming and Old Creek calming to reverse the order of those two. So it'd be a different motion. Yeah, that's right. Well, he he wants to amend the motion that we're discussing. A substitute motion. Yeah, substitute okay. amend amendment, which well, it's not really an amendment. Yeah, it's a I don't... substitute. Okay, it's totally different. Yeah, at that point. All right. Is there a second to Alder Warman's proposed substitute amendment? I'll second it. All right. I'll call the question. All those in favor of Alder Lerman's substitute amendment say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. 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 Motion fails 2 4. Lang and Lerman voting affirmative. Harry, Kim, Don, Charles voting in favor. All right. Don, opposed, you mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, opposed. Yeah, opposed. Opposed. Yeah, opposed. Yeah. You can keep it in favor of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, in favor of the other. Favor of the, the right. favor of the main motion. <laughs> um, so then we're back to the first motion, which is only simply to move eight to last. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. You're you're opposed? Yeah, I want it to say the way it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it can get confusing. Yeah. Okay. That's the other thing. You're right. No, that's good to clarify. So motion carries Shuffner opposed. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good clarification because it Right. Yeah. I have can't tell you how many times it's been a motion to substitute <laughs> motion. It's like, wait, no, I'm gonna vote okay. on the substitute. So right, the so reorders, is there anything other that we want to reorder, add, or delete? So if, if we're recommending defer the railroad crossing repairs, we should move that down to the bottom of the list. Um, well, we could just take it off. That's yeah. what I'm suggesting. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Bring it back some other day. Yeah. All those in favor of 
or excuse me, is there a second to uh, defer the uh, rail crossing repairs? I'll second. Second from Madden. Is there any discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. Who made that as a motion? I did. No, it was been... Okay. Now I'm going. All those in favor? Is there any discussion done? You sound like you. No, I was going to make talk about something else. Okay. The next item ah, still bothers me. All right. All those in favor of deferring consideration of the rail crossing repairs, say aye. 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 All opposed, hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Don. Um, the next item, I still don't know why a new water resources group doesn't handle that to come out of the uh, revenue from the stormwater utility. I I don't know enough about where that line gets drawn, but I don't think storm sewer or culverts typically have been considered other than uh, you know, city's kind of general work that all storm sewers are not really drainage ditches aren't but ditches are more of a drainage ditch has to go through a culvert yeah yep and so it's a weird line so if a culvert goes right. under a road it's all of a sudden public works but where the culvert ends and there's a natural drainage flow it's, 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 it's all a resource i think I'm not certain that that's no, it is every because place, I remember but, discussing that and doing some yeah. work on one after the uh, major flooding process. Okay, it just yeah, it just seems odd. Maybe I'll bring it up. Yeah, it feels like that could be massaged or we got to come up with twenty thousand dollars to deal with this. <laughs> Actually, as public works, could we send that question over to the city attorney? To see if there's a way to yeah, ship sure. it over to you. He'll scratch his head and pull his hair out and not know the answer either. I mean, for the longest time it was is it maintenance or is it new construction, which took up hours of time in swell meetings. <laughs> there, there might be some obscure language in there somewhere that you know talks about yeah, there might be a physical modification aperture to something, all of a sudden it becomes a public works versus unnatural unmodified natural becomes there might be there's some language in there i mean it's twenty thousand dollars it probably doesn't mean a whole lot to this budget item budget list mm -hmm. but i think it's something that water researchers should discuss this really takes for at the end of a drainage ditch yeah yeah i wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed. Oh, to no, that. you wouldn't, because then it wouldn't come out of your best. <laughs> well, it'd still work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would it, would the proper way to say it is for an item number 12 as a, well, not say no to it, but want some yes. recommendation? Well, even if, even if subsequent to this it gets shuffled to a different account number so that'd be a different thing than saying oh it's just not visible yeah because then it won't get funded regardless of which account it belongs can we yeah like charles said send it to water resources and say hey would this fall under your billing right under your costs or should it or yeah. should it maybe then it's just a legal yeah i think it is just a legal question I thought it might be more of a policy question than a legal question. Yeah, either. yeah I was going to say. I think in the interest of like time, just leave it here and ask for the future. Yeah. It, yeah. Just like ask like, like, hey, for future yeah. issues like this, could we get more clarification on where this should fall? I'll make sure I bring it up this way. The other question is, if it doesn't happen in 2025 and it happens in 20, I mean, it's low on the list. Right. So from a technical standpoint, is this really a priority? In other words, if it doesn't get done and we're looking at erosion problems, problem, a, a damage to property, um, 
Well, I, I think North Lake has some concerns okay. that, that there are some maintenance needs going on and it's it's um, a bit hand in glove because all of the ditches within North Lake are privately owned. And then the culverts we want to assume should have been publicly owned. It's not terribly clear, uh, but then we would work on getting easements and making that clear before we get into this as a project. In the meantime, there are a couple of culvert issues we'll want to take care of in the short term, just sort of as a Band-Aid solution. Um, but I, I think like any infrastructure sort of thing, you can always make stuff limp along one more year or two more years. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I, that's one thing I don't ever want us to kind of be is something that needs to get done. I don't want it to not get done because we, from an administrative standpoint, I'm just going to shuffle it around because we don't know where to. I have no objection to leaving it on the list, but I will bring it up yeah. to the water resources. For example, I mean, if there's a driveway that goes over a culvert, whose responsibility is that in a ditch? I think it's actually the driveway owner at that uh, point. Right. So yeah. why wouldn't this be the property owners? And very well put. It. And that's where I think that gray area is. Was that the intention yeah. at the time? But yeah. It, in this particular case, it goes under a road. Uh, yeah. We're that property owner. Yeah. So uh, there must be some of those in the uh, which road is T wall there? subdivisions. Several of them. Okay. There are many culverts yeah. over there. So I hate to do this, but can we briefly pause our discussion? Because every time that dance class has let out, yeah. the front door has locked behind them. I did put a note up this time, as you had suggested. Yeah. It might help. Can we verify that? Well, we can. We'd have to probably take a committee I'd, recess. Yeah, I'd, I'd move to take a three-minute recess to confirm that the door is unlocked. Are they out? And, I want me to run over there and just check the door. Motion and vote on or just declare a recess? Yeah, I, I could just declare a recess, but... Yeah, sure. Let's yeah, have a because we're about at the forty-five minute mark anyway. So, five five, five minute recess and to personal needs, and check the door. Sounds good. Okay. Did that get locked with a key fob, or was it a? Um... I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It just keeps. So you want to make sure people can come to attend the mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah, yeah. Because the last like two or three meetings, that class has let out. The door has subsequently locked behind them. I know facilities was going to look at something to do with our doors as well from the conversation either you and I had or I don't know about the front door. Yeah, maybe it was just the interior. Maybe the interior I'm, doors yeah, have been I may moving. Be, and, I may be yeah. transposing my doors. Um, I think we're pretty stable on where they go now. Oh, yeah. which direction they swing. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's green and it's unlocked. Great. Thank you. So it's right. the oh, okay. So right on the very edge of that. So it's so a staff okay. person who locked it. Probably they did their shh, 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 and then walked up. Didn't realize we were sitting in your house. Which isn't game. a bad thing. But yeah. Sure. Like, so, you know, so my gosh, gosh. People make so mistakes. Yeah, I guess as long as some down other down staff says, down I got this. Oh, yeah. That's reasonable. Right on the, the it would be so just as bad right. for someone to not lock the door and walk out and without the, knowing the someone today, else oh, is covering it. Oh, nice. I figured out the magic swipe. Oh, no. oh, oh, storms. When, red. Yeah, it flashes yeah. for a while. Yeah. yeah. When you guys had your unintentional lock in here uh, yeah. a few weeks ago, or a month ago, I guess at this point, I was, uh, was kind of horrified. When, when not, right? <laughs> you were locked in, and I, how does that happen? Oh, it's like you have to know a guy to get out of here. Yeah, why does the door lock this way? <laughs> on the other side. To Mr. Figures. It's me too. Oh, since 2009. Oh, okay. I'm Brandon oh, we're, so so now we're just waiting on to middle Brandon, and we have two more minutes. Sean Windsor. Oh, under the roads in so Bishop Hayes department. It's probably unrelated to Middle Lake. So, okay. Okay. Oh, Windsor. Oh, then the farm thing. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, uh, by West. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. 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 Is right. today or or maintain so those so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have, a, yeah. I have enough to keep up with the city. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. I was just curious. So it's a fair it's, question. Hi, Mama. And so not all of ours are public. Some of our culverts are it's specifically private. Process, so it's right on the plan. I yeah. never witnessed it. Oh, well. It's the plan, um, though, but it's like kids. It's yeah, really don't even tell me that. Yeah, it was a big surprise. <laughs> Brendan has it's, rejoined it's, us. Yeah, well, it is so needed. Catch crayfish up. Yeah, here. Crazy so shaking. we are back. Uh, members present Lang, Schuffner, Madden, Lorman. I'm so sorry, Connor Myers. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have a quorum. The meeting has resumed. Uh, I believe Alder Lorman. Either you or Don were discussing uh, the the last item. The last item. Yeah, not the door. <laughs> I think just let's leave it on, but I will bring it up. At, okay. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. So I do have committee direction to defer this. Really possible. Are there any other items that the committee would want to reorder, add, or delete? Hate to do this because it's under a different item. Um, it's in the tip section, the uh, Parmenter Street reconstruction. Yeah. Um, up Sean, in streets. Yeah, up in streets. Um, I agree with the order, um, but I, I was on that road uh, yesterday watching someone on their bike, mm -hmm. and uh, how are. Do we have enough money budgeted for easements in this item? I don't know. For are you saying line two? No, line oh. line line one. The line one. Oh. Street job. Oh, Street. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're getting closer to a design that's satisfactory to the neighbors. I don't know what the full fallout of that is just yet. Okay, I just want to make sure that we have enough in that line item. Me too. Uh, so this is a placeholder, and I expect that to get revised, but I don't know if it will be revised up or down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I Anything else, or does the committee endorse the rest of the capital um, budget requests as are? I'll move that we endorse it. One more second. To finance, towards it to finance. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. We have a motion. Don, a second. Dave. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Perfect. Uh, so we have not previously this year looked at the water and sewer budgets, but Mike Meyer, our water utility manager, uh, well, water and sewer utility manager, sorry, uh, is with us tonight and he's prepared, this is the form we actually turn these things in, uh, prepared updated estimates of where we'll end 2024 and then also decision items for 2025. Uh, and so we tend to fill in these, I'll say yellow, columns, um, all the figures in there. And uh, as usual, uh, utilities don't have a lot of decision items. We tend year after year to do what has to get done. And 
until costs change significantly, we don't tend to worry too much about it. So I don't know if if you had anything you wanted to say as an overview, Mike, or if the committee has any questions on any of these decision items. Um, oh, I would just add, you know, last year was an incredibly dry year, so sales were good. This year is an incredibly wet year, so it's quite the polar opposite. So um, it's just kind of interesting, you know, to try to average some of that stuff out. Yeah, that's a good point. It's kind of like us trying to buy salt. I don't know yet what next winter is going to look like, <laughs> um, but I already bought salt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So again, there, there aren't a lot of decision items in here, unlike my list, which gets kind of extensive. Um, most of this gets done into the capital budget kinds of realm. So I don't know if there were any questions. John, I, can, I can't see the left side um, where you're looking, but uh, is this where... Uh, I can't either, but what... Okay, there we go. How can you? <laughs> no, no, that's good. If um, I make it small enough, yeah. Yeah, that is teeny. Um. And I don't know if we're at the point where we're talking new employee. Um, you're looking at expenses of the general, um, but the water utility would be looking to add a future employee for 2025. Oh, in 25, you've got okay. Did you have those costs in here? I didn't I... all have seen them yet. I don't know if Bill got back to me with that yet. Oh, costing it out? Yes. Gotcha. But um, I can make sure it's in there by the end of the week. Exactly. So for the committee, personnel stuff is dealt with sort of off to the side of our general operating expenses, because uh, First Finance Department wants to cost it all out. And it gets dealt with a little bit separately at the Finance and Personnel Committee level, too, usually. Um, so, so yeah, that's probably why it's not in your mic yet. We don't okay. have just, yet. yeah, I had just filled out that paperwork asking for, um, additional, um, employee just a little bit ago. So I'm assuming that's a bit of a process. Exactly. Yep. But good to know. So for water or sewer, is there anything people saw that you'd want to talk about in this budget? I don't have anything. No, I think they put every year we see this and they do a pretty good, pretty, pretty good thing together. Yeah. I won't I won't tell Mike. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Can, can you I, mute I, me so Mike doesn't? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Don. I hear nothing. I hear nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I I would move that we uh, is it, is it endorse yeah. the uh, operating budgets for water and sewer utility, which will include the addition of a new employee next year. Uh, currently, not in the line item. Not an eight line eight months, but cheap. All right. So I'll approve it with that in it. So there's no question when it comes back. I'll, I'll second. Oh, not endorse it. Endorse it, yeah. yeah. I'll second that motion. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none. Uh, Brandon, did you mean to vote? Yeah, I said I. I don't know if it oh. caught up or what. It didn't get caught. All right. Motion carries unanimously. Next item, uh, capital budgets, water and sewer utility. These are a little easier to look at, um, and, and they're segregated. There's water utility and sewer utility, but it's the same person preparing all of this. Uh, so Mike's on again. Uh, a lot of these are sort of recurring sort of things like replacing old water main, replacing old water meters, um, 
um, where we do sort of the same thing all the time. Um, we try to stagger our uh, well rehabs uh, you know, so we can keep those current, same in the sewer side. And then there are sort of less frequent things like vehicle replacements or, or sort of sort of specialty projects, like replacing SCADA system, that kind of thing. So I don't know, Mike, if you want to give the high level overview of anything special on this, and I'm sure Well Five's one of them. <laughs> yep. Um Well Five. Um if you if you look at 2024. Uh, there was 175,000 that was um, basically allocated and thought process for the rehab of Well 5. Well 5 uh, has been um, examined by our engineering department, which is Strand and Associates. And they have come up with basically the 2.2 the um, million that you see there. Um, basically, Well 5 has... It's been rehab throughout time, um, but not extensively. It was, it was fixed and put back, but like no major upgrades to it. Uh, where Well Five is at right now is it needs some upgrades. And once you start doing upgrades, and I'll, I'll talk about what those are here in a second, um, you kind of open Pandora's box with the DNR, if you will. Um, when you start off with our chemical room, uh, which houses our fluoride and chlorine gas together. The DNR, you know, 50, 60 years ago, that was okay. The DNR absolutely does not want those together anymore. Um, so with the rehab of well five, they are telling us, if you're going to work on that well, we're going to need you to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, first off being a separate room to house the chlorine gas from the fluoride um, that means separate ventilation um, uh, once you start doing that then they talk plumbing codes fire protection uh, then when you start opening all that you start looking at electrical panels um, and, and another huge cost here is a generator that the dnr is going to want to see us put in there um so so it's it's like this giant snowball effect once you start working on this well and what it needs. Um, so that's why you see the astronomical um, jump in it. Um, Strand, uh, we had a meeting, Sean and I did today with Strand and Strand just basically pointed out how, um, you know, the water utility has been incredibly excellent at saving money, um, creating that cash fund balance um, and getting us to where we are now now we need to start putting that money back into the system uh, for a better product, longer life, um, and just getting us basically up to code with what the DNR wants to see out of us for safety and, and everything else for the public. So that's why you see that giant number. Of course, that is subject to change. Um, it could come down. It could go up. There's there's things that I'm working on uh, with Strand and the DNR to so if we if we switch to a chlorine liquid versus a chlorine gas, then we might be able to keep those chemicals together in the same room, saving us money. Um, instead of putting a generator in the back of well five, we might be able to do uh, an attach where we have a gen set trailer that we keep at the shop. And if it's required, then we take the gen set trailer over there to hook onto. Um, we're working on this. It's, it's kind of a it's, it's a moving, evolving thing, but that's where we are at with that. And I know that's long-winded for that one. Um, oh, it's a big ticket. So it, worth it. Is. Where is Well 5? It's on Elmwood Avenue. Um, I can't say too much, but yeah. uh, okay. it's sort of in the heart of that area. Okay. So I, I imagine like it's security is yeah. also a big upgrade it's a pretty it's easy drive by i would say um, no but i mean so like in terms isn't... of costs like we have to put more security oh, and stuff in as well is that part i of... think that's a pretty routine thing okay. that we work on and that's not the big part of this this is mm -hmm. like mike said do we need to add rooms and service panel mm -hmm. and a generator is like four hundred thousand dollars yeah mike what's the horsepower of that well the horsepower of that well 
Yeah. I, I honestly would have to look that up to get you an, a, a, a factual okay. answer on that one. I mean, well, five is a, is a pretty good sized well. I can tell you that much. Cause um, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to get into your design, but hauling around a huge generator is not a fun task. No, um, but we do actually have a recently upgraded gen set, and it's a monster, um, but it's quiet. It's got the power that we need. Uh, we're actually looking to get a sister to it because of what we've seen from it already. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's not out of the realm. And, and honestly, we never have it where all the wells are running at the same time, even on our highest demands. Um, it would take a catastrophic event to, to have all our wells need to be on at one time. Right. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is to have a generator strictly at that. Well, I, I could see where it would be a lot nicer to have a portable in the case of an emergency. Like if we needed a well five, it could be destined, you know, designated for well five, but could also be useful for a lot of other things um, and other power outages in different parts of the city. So um, that's just kind of my thought with that too. Okay. So this, uh, this line item, this is more of a assumption that we do have to build out everything in more of a worst case financial scenario than potentially cost cutting that would be equally safe, of course, but, um, would cost less. Correct. Uh, this is like, I'll say worst case scenario. Um, but I'm, I'm, we're trying to walk this down to not be this expensive. Um, and I'm working with strand with that. Like a, it's kind of a, it seems to be with the DNR, it's a little bit of a give and take. I mean, it, the DNR is going to basically tell us what we have to do regardless. Um, but I'm just hoping, you know, if, if, if we do this, then maybe they'll let us do something different in return or, or if they make us do this, maybe something else works better for us. If we go a different direction um, with, like I said, we're talking about changing chemicals. If we switch chemicals at well five and we go to a liquid chlorine, we're going to want to go to a liquid chlorine to every one of our well sites, which again, kind of changes the dynamic, but there's some money to be saved there, but that money that's saved would Profs probably go right back into the other wells to change that. Currently, um, the city of Middleton using chlorine gas is less um, popular. Most uh, municipalities have switched to chlorine liquid. Um, it's safer. You don't have to have these emergency shutoff valves that you have to place on top of these large tanks. Um, you know, the tanks have to be tied to the wall. Uh, it's definitely something that we're interested in progressing forward anyways, because it just seems to be the safer route and the better route to go. I, it, wouldn't it just make sense then in general, if this is what the industry is, uh, you know, is leaning towards that, that we already get that message out there to common council um, and to folks like that. So we know that you know moving forward, the city needs to keep with technology in the sense of chemical handling and, and trends like that. Because if that's what everybody else is doing, then from a supply chain standpoint, I'm thinking there will be more liquid chlorine available as opposed to chlorine gas 10 years from now. You're absolutely correct. Uh, this is this is something I wanted to push anyways. Well, five might take us there, uh, you know, as 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 an expected anyways. That the DNR might just tell us like, well, you know, if if you're willing to go to the liquid um, chlorine, then we can avoid having to put that extra room on with all that extra cost. Um, I'm, that's not a. I'm not saying that's for sure or anything, but right. That, that, that's what we're working on at least. Yeah, yeah, it, you're you're 100 right. If if we can get the note out about that, I, it, our Hawkins rep who sells our chemicals, he said too. He's like, I don't know why you guys just don't go to a bulk tank, which is basically what what we do. And I have actually given the numbers over to Strand already for sizing for all of our other wells, just to start bringing them up to speed as a potential for a, another um, capital improvement item for next year you know we do a few more wells or we do basically we want to do them all at the same time because we don't want to be shuttling 
you know, both chemicals. We just would want to switch over and be on one at one time. Um, so is it, and I don't know if we're, I mean, obviously you can't go in this kind of budget cycle, but thinking ahead then, looking at all the other locations in the city that have chlorine gas, for example, to just have a mental idea of saying, oh, okay, this is what we're looking at of converting over with our existing infrastructure. So now we have a sense of, there will be a cost savings from 26 to 27 to 28 on out. So by this being the start of it, now we're justifying the future. Now I think it's, that us lay people can understand. Oh, absolutely. Um, like I said, just from what I've been told by Strand is the emergency shutoff valves that have to be created for the chlorine tanks, the gas, they're just incredibly expensive to begin with. Um, there you go. Then, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we would already be money ahead. That's why if we can do that, I am, I am looking to do that. And I do have Strand... Um, I gave them a month's worth of our chlorine use um, as well as our well pumpages so they can, they are already figuring out dosages. So basically if we would want to make the switch, they already know what tank size we would need for what well, and it would be ready to go. Okay. Well, and I would say just be prepared to, to have that same, call it um, sell uh, when this comes in front of the finance and common council. So, you know, we're, we're gonna we're laying the foundation for doing a process now that we want to do moving forward with our other wells, and it's going to save money ultimately. And yes, you are correct. I agree. Thank you. Thank you for including a conservative number in this year's budget um, for the rehabilitation costs. Best to not get optimistic with uh, construction costs. <laughs> yeah. No. Sean, are you looking for an endorsement on this as well? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did anyone have any other? I'll, I'll make that motion. Oh, and, but and did you need to talk so, about anything else? Sorry, Carrie. I meant to. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, and there's less, I would say, I'm super focused on. It's all pretty normal stuff. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and make that motion to endorse the um, capital improvement plan for water and sewer utility. I'll second. We have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. All right, we're out of the budget. Uh, next item on the agenda is resolution 2024-34 authorizing an application for Agricultural Roads Improvement Program ARIP funding for Onkin Road resurfacing. All right, Sean, you're, uh, oops, there we are. Um, and Jake Buns is on the line here tonight, too. Oh, and have a good night, Mike. Thanks. Thank you for joining us, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sure you've all poured over the uh, staff comments that I included, which were lengthy, but the short version is there's some uh, funding that may be available and applicable to the reconstruction of Onkin Road, which is partly in Westport and partly in Middleton. Uh, and the question came to, I wanna say the Finance and Personnel Committee, which referred it to the Public Works Committee for some research and advice to go back to them about whether uh, we would endorse the resolution for applying for that funding. I think that's probably the short version. 
uh, it, it seemed, and I didn't have a ton of time to look at it. I think applications are due September 30th, I want to say. And my first impression is there's going to be some light work, but Jake called up in the meantime and said uh, that T Wall Enterprises volunteers to do the light work part of that. If I'm overstepping, Jake, just jump in. Um, but but that's what I heard. Uh, so I I think that uh, the intention is for this not to take much staff time. We still have to turn in the application only municipalities are eligible to apply. And it's our road. Uh, I think T-Ball Enterprises has a level of interest in yeah. getting the road redone. Yeah, that road's really rough shape. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's not fun to drive on. It's not fun to bike on. Bad road. It's bad. Uh, bad road in the winter, worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see people go off the road. So, Sean, how much time will you need to review what T Wall sends prior to submitting the application? Well, I don't know. I don't know what'll be needed, and I don't know what'll be provided. Uh, so, I can't say how long it'll take to review and cut and paste and fill in the blanks of a computer based application. Um, I, I would hazard a guess of something in the 10 to 15 hour range, which is not insignificant in my life, unfortunately, but if that's what the council asks, that's what the council asks. And they're, I mean, I'm gonna ask this, I mean, yes, but they're, they've are they done this type of application before, because you're like, you know what I mean? Like, because otherwise you could get something that's not, it's a pretty new program, and it seems to be asking specifically for some sort of economic analysis of how is this going to benefit agriculture. Now, mm -hmm. That seems to be their real focus here, not average drivers, mm -hmm. uh, oh. not municipalities, uh, as much as how does this benefit um, <laughs> production uh, or no, transport of agricultural products. All right. so Interesting. Jake, um, could you walk us through the steps that you're taking to prepare the data that Sean would then need to review? Yeah, so uh, we actually sat down with uh, the town of Westport, um, Dean Groskoff and Kevin even, they had applied for this, the second round of uh, funding for this era grant. Um, so in the first round, Westport had applied for um, two of their roads to be considered as Kennedy and Effort, I believe. Um, but Kevin even kind of walked us through what they had submitted um, in their application and the data they had put together. And it, it it's not it's not as much as it may seem um, reading through the AREP standards. It's it's pretty like I, I don't think this should even take us all a whole bunch of time obviously it's going to take time so i'm hoping that it doesn't uh, take 10 to 15 hours of sean's time uh reviewing it and everything but um it's one of those things where this the Ankin road has a significant impact on the community of bishop's bay um and a lot of our residents drive it every day um and we've heard from the town and our residents a lot of you know negative feedback about the state of the road and everything um just given it's narrow, it's not functioning the way it should, and it's pretty beat up. Um, so when this ARIP thing came out, we were, we were like, oh, this is a great opportunity to maybe get some funding to um, redo the road, so. Jake, I have a question though, like how would this meet the intent of the grant, right? So I mean, if I was reviewing the grant and it's for transportation of agricultural, like what, what would be the case that you're making? I can understand that we can pull data and stuff, but it might be a waste of time if we don't meet the intent of the grant. Yeah, you're right. And and so there's two farms located off of Ankin, like directly on Ankin Road. Um, but we think there's agricultural usage from farms trucking um, that use the road to, uh, you know, deliver goods or, or truck to those farms or out of those farms or to farms within the vicinity. Um, so it's something that we're gonna we're going to do the analysis on um, and find out. But it would be we would be remiss in not taking the opportunity to at least look into it, given the um, percentage of funding available. 
and the state of Onken Road. Is there any consideration for safety, you know, in terms of you know, school buses are out there picking kids up? I didn't get that impression. No. Interesting. And, yeah, and no. I don't no, think it applied as much, Jake, to others who might want to haul there because it frankly seemed to be couched in terms of that that the agricultural use doesn't have any other reasonable alternative. So if a different farmer could say route on M or Q or K uh, instead of Onken Road, I think their presumption is going to be then that they should do that. And is this eligible, is this whole state? Like what? It is statewide. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I feel like this is not, it's not being going to meet the intent. I feel like this is, if I was reviewing this grant, I'm sure there's other situations in the entire state that would be more agriculturally focused. Just looking at a map in this area, it's like more, like that area is more residential right there. I don't know. That's just yeah. my thoughts. No, no, I, I think that's, that's a good point. We talked about this as well, but like I said, I mean, this road has so much more uses than agricultural, but if we can prove that, it, you know, there's a way to improve it for the agricultural uses. And I, I believe the Arab grant also called out timbers as well, which is more, the, more northern Wisconsin. But um, I think it's in dire need of a replacement. So, um, you know, I, I told Sean that we'd put in the work to run an analysis and put an application together and see if it works. Yeah, so I, you know, for the committee, I'll just highlight from their own website, they said the application consists of um, documented agricultural economic impact, which they specifically enumerated as including reductions in repeated trucking trips at reduced weights, labor costs, fuel costs, equipment damage, number of employees affected, and the amount of agricultural product sales affected. So farmers are constantly finding they have to send half loads when they could send full loads, that would be um, of interest, I think, to the yeah. uh, uh, so weight limit. Yeah. Right. There is a small bridge on that road that might have a weight limit. Yeah, it seemed almost like a culvert. I, I don't know if it rises to the level of bridge. It would need a span of 20 feet to be called a bridge, but, but it might be the linchpin to this whole thing, because right now it's rated eight ton. And as part of this, if you accept the funding, you have to get rid of it. Yeah. I also, like, I just, I don't know, again, like, this is just something new. Have we ever done this before where we have a developer prepare a grant on our behalf? Like, I just feel like, is there some kind of conflict of, I don't know, like, I, would we have to write up an agreement? Like, would we need to? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, it, it's it's sort of routine for developers to provide information, for instance, for an urban service area amendment. The city has to turn it in, but mm -hmm. we don't do the majority of work. Okay. I would view this along similar lines. If we get bad information or no information, we don't have to turn it in. Okay. You're going to actually relate it to TIAs, developer pays for that? Correct. So it's a good question, not my top concern. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. That information to determine whether or not it's good or bad information takes more of your time. Uh, right. I, yeah, I would want to at least see if it seems reasonable, but I think a big part of it, like we'd have to get it from the farmers themselves. They have to give us like five years of history of here's how we've lost money, but didn't need to. Except that's for this the light work that's required that evolved. And, and Right. Yeah, and we have a we have a pretty good just given the developing Bishop's Bay, we have a pretty good relationship with the the farmers out there. So, um, we should have shouldn't have a tough time getting that information. Yeah, I would think too. If it's due September thirtieth, when would you have the information over to Sean's department? Um, I'm not sure. I, Sean, if you have a date you want it by, you can let me know. I was kind of waiting um, for this meeting to get the like we're kicked off um so i just want one you to get it on the 29th or whatever yeah right that wouldn't help no i i, I hope i wouldn't do that to you sean <laughs> uh, and i think That's coming something. out of here the council could look at this on august 20th um uh, 
um, which means then you started on like work. I mean, you could get started earlier, I guess. Uh, I'll probably get started. I mean, if you guys are giving a positive recommendation to the council, I'll probably just get started with some of the base stuff just so we're not too far behind. Sure. So, so I would hope that if I could get it all together by, say, September 16th, okay. that could be a two week window to give it a, a once over and type it all in. I'd want us to look at it as a committee, as a grant. Oh, um, in that case, well, you could look at it September 23rd. 23rd, you'd be able to get it through onto the agenda reviewed so that you'd be able to. Those are two different questions. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I just, you know, I think maybe you might want to push your date for receiving the information uh, a little bit uh, further uh, or further back in the month so the week mm -hmm. prior, maybe, so that you have a chance to actually really get into it. I see. Well, do you think, Jake, you could have it together by the 9th? Uh, I, then I'd have a week and a half to get it to the committee. That's a full I, month data. I do not know. I can sure try, though. I just don't, I don't want, what I don't want to happen is say I can't get it to you until the 15th and then the committee is asked to see the, see the grant prior and then it doesn't get submitted and doesn't get a chance to see it and then it doesn't get submitted before the 30th. Um, that's my only concern. I will for sure try to get it to you by the 9th, Sean, um, but I, I just see, you know, there's, there's, there's work that goes into this. I mean, um, so, yeah. That, that was my first impression of it too. Well, and that's where I was just like, I just don't know if it's worth it. To me, it doesn't seem to align with the intent, but I haven't read through the grant in detail, so I don't. Whether it aligns with the intent, intent is what the scoring bottle uh, that the state uses is for. Uh, we're just looking at. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's state, state funds to repair a road that is in dire need and I, if you guys haven't driven on Onkin recently i would highly encourage you to do to do so i think it's very very dangerous especially in the winter so um so yeah i, I think we're just seeing we're seeing an opportunity and uh, maybe we can uh talk to the farmers and maybe they do have needs for it so we we're that's why we offer to do the legwork too or we might as well give it a shot if it's you know 90 percent 90 percent funding for the road reconstruction and sean part of this would be confirming that the weight restriction that we have on that road uh isn't because of something that we need to change that would ultimately cost more right oh no uh, the design would have to eliminate the weight restriction. yeah no I, I know that's that's why we want to check before yeah, yeah. I, um, i'm not sure how that got set or why yeah we should probably get a firmed up answer on that it's probably set because the best way to improve agricultural deliveries is to increase the weight of the truck so they can carry more stuff. Always seems like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there. Yeah, if you could include that, Jake, uh, as to the, the reasoning of the current weight limit, uh, that would give a heads up for what it'll take to remove. Okay. So you need a motion for us to recommend proceeding? Yeah, it'd be a recommendation to finance personnel and to the Common Council to approve the resolution authorizing staff to apply for the funding. Okay. I will make that motion. I'll second that motion. And, and with the understanding that T Wall Enterprises will produce the majority of information. Correct. Mm -hmm. We have a motion, we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? 
Hearing none. Or, nay. Nay. Okay. Chuck or opposed. Sorry, I thought I heard you. I. Oh, no, it's okay. No. All right. Motion carries by one. Jake, thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, thank you guys. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, resolution 2024-38, declaration of public utility easement for services at Pleasant View Golf Course. Yeah. Um, so we have been working, I have been working with TDS and Charter for a long time throughout the Pleasant View reconstruction project. Number one, to get their utilities out of the way of the blasting and lowering of the hill, which they did uh, while still providing temporary services to the golf course. Um, but then in looking at the permanent easement alignment, uh, it was intended that that would go back into the road right of way, except it would have had to go around and up the backside of a very large retaining wall that's holding up that pedestrian overpass bridge across the road. Uh, and so frankly, we were looking more at like, what would it just take to follow along the edge as an offset of the golf course drive? This is the result of that, which has been several years in the making. Um, and let me bounce over to a drawing because drawings are sometimes better. Yeah, I was looking at that. Wanted to understand a little bit. So this is the golf course driveway that goes west along the fence line to the golf course. Uh, and there's a little hairpin turn of a bike path that's brand new that has a retaining wall on it. And there's a little bit of room between the driveway and that retaining wall in which sort of this heavy black line would be where CBS and Charter are close to that line right now, but part of it meandered off with their boring and went under the driveway. So in part, it would be to save all of this work that they did on a temporary basis and then just realign this work to get up to their uh, service point so that they'd be out from under any pavement, um, but still largely where they are. Um, and that this easement would be within what is already a bike path easement. So it's not new easement area, it's adding on to what is already easement area. Of course, it's all buried, so yes, doesn't interfere with uh, the bike path or utilization of it in any way whatsoever. No, it's just that we know someday there's interest in maybe uh, widening or shifting the alignment of the golf course driveway. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want it under that or too close to that. And so that's where the interest came in realigning part of that and getting it within that existing bike path instead of kind of its own new land that would be taken from the golf course besides. And have we to the golf course in committee on in on this? Uh, Jeremy is aware of this, and he's got it on the agenda for the Pleasant View Golf Course Advisory Committee. Okay, right. So my recommendation would be for this to make a motion to the Pleasant View Golf Course Advisory, even though, uh, to get to the Common Council. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Great. We have a motion from Don, a second from Kim. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it. And we are on next item, which is policy development on-street accessible parking. Yeah, so at the last meeting, um, I had pretty extensive comments, I would say, for consideration in as much where there is not documentation 
more so than where there was documentation. So this is sort of a stripped down version now to remove all of that. Here's where there are no regulations or guidance or policy. And, and so this is left just with, well, where is there guidance or documentation or policy? And then I added into that, uh, I think a bit of a refinement as to a suggested priority order for catching up where we're deficient. And at its heart, I think all that's left is, is PROWAG, uh, which is the Public Rights of Way Accessibility Guidelines um, that was put together by the US Access Board. It, it kind of was developed in recognition that the ADA law really doesn't do a very good job of describing the limitations of public rights of way where slopes and offsets are pretty well set and, and they're not really malleable the way site development and parking lots can be. So to some degree, especially existing roads, we're just stuck with what we do have. And so probably took a more pragmatic look at streets and said, okay, but how can we make these things useful for, for folks who have some needs that are uh, you know, maybe different than others? And so they, they still have a high level of interest, but they understand too, there are a lot of trade-offs with design that as much as they can set down guidelines, even then stuff sometimes doesn't fit. And, a lot of times when I call the folks over at uh, US Justice, they say, well, make your trade-offs and do your best. Uh, they won't tell you this is good or bad. <laughs> they, they will tell you, um, here's what we think you ought to be looking at, or we think that's a reasonable trade-off. You're not gonna get them to say, this is good design. They won't go that far. So anyway, uh, they did give us a lot of guidance in these documents where there are a couple of sections specifically carved out in ProWeg for on-street accessible parking stalls, where they should be, how they should look, uh, what slope requirements you have. Um, and that it, especially if you, if you can't get sort of an on-street deflection of curb line, um, which seems to be their preference, where you could have this neutral space, the car is still parked in the same line as all the other cars, but there's five feet of space for somebody to get out of a passenger side and up a ramp onto the sidewalk. They recognize that that's not always gonna be the case, in which case they would say, get this accessible parking spot closest to a crosswalk curb ramp or a mid-block crosswalk curb ramp uh, so at least as folks are getting out of the car, they're right next to or near a uh, curb ramp to get onto the sidewalk that way. And then they have some guidance for um, how many accessible spaces there ought to be, but it all comes back to uh, that, that these in their guidance are required where uh, parking stalls are signed or marked or metered, but we don't have any metered parking spots in the city. So for us, signed or marked, which really whittles things down because we just don't have that many signed or marked spots. We have relatively uh, limited areas where we have high parking turnover on a street that's not served by a parking lot. And the parking lot I think is always gonna be safer than getting out of a driver's side door with a street, even if you're near a curb ramp. But we have some angle parking too in the city that is not fit with accessible parking. And that I think is the lowest hanging fruit of all of this, where we not only should be doing that, but could be doing that. So that was my priority suggestion. Number one is let's get on that get those up to standard. Um, but then I, I uh, am suggesting too that, that we um, focus on sort of commercial and other high turnover areas that aren't served by a parking lot. Uh, verify, of course, that our parking lots meet the standards and, and kind of start there. 
So that as an overview, I'll open it up to the committee. I know there was an interest too in making a referral to Penn Bike Transit because they haven't seen this yet. We should have to start here. Yeah. Shipping to the Commission on Aging and the Plan Commission. Uh, Commission on Aging, particularly for what they view as higher priorities, since the population that that commission serves uh, has a high percentage of like users of these stalls, so they may have a better idea than us about what the highest priority within our high priority zones would be. I, I will say we've talked with the senior center mm -hmm. uh, director um, several times. And, and there was um, sort of some back and forth about should we have on-street accessible parking at the senior center? And at the end of the day, the preference was not to do that, but to increase the number of uh, more usable stalls. And But even for that, they didn't want more accessible stalls. They want more courtesy stalls. So for folks with mobility impairments, that don't have a placard or license plate that says they can park in an accessible stall, and yet they have a hard time walking great distance, you know, to get some courtesy stalls marked in our um, senior center parking lot. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on that separately, um, but they didn't see the benefit or need <laughs> on the street by the senior center. Okay. Imagine putting in courtesy stalls doesn't have any impact on this because, from a federal standpoint, they're working within their box. Exactly. They're not enforceable. They don't require a permit. They require common courtesy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for that, uh, whoever's driving the car has to make that decision. Works in Metcalfs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Right, yeah. 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 So, so I, you know, I'm just thinking through yeah. what we've already been through. I don't know that the Committee on Aging is going to have a lot to say about the citywide policy for on street accessible parking, <laughs> other than they wanted more courtesy parking. Yeah. They just may have some. Based on the population that they serve, they may have some broader insight than we will about which specific place. It's not necessarily for the policy development, but a little bit down the line for getting it to implementation. Oh, and that's part of what I'm hoping that the city gives guidance on is, you know, should we do the angle spots first? And should we focus on high turnover areas? You know, but Partly because we don't have a lot of signed and marked areas. That's what ProWay yeah. deals with. Beyond mm -hmm. that, it would be discretionary for the city to say, yeah, but we can do better. I like what you put together, Sean, and I agree with like the, you know, focusing on the, the high turnover areas first. And I think this this makes sense. Up in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of those are angle parking as well. So mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the advantage of handicap parking in let's say the downtown area where it is high turnover, is it just makes it convenient if they want to go to the stores, restaurants in the downtown area to find a close place to park mm -hmm. with their, because it's reserved for their disability. So they can get there without having to walk six blocks or however many blocks right. it takes. Right. So, and that's totally, what do you want to do? Because <laughs> yeah, there is there is no real requirement. Right. So in an angle spot, because they're marked, yeah. there is a requirement. Yeah. Um, and in other areas, you know, because part of the trade-off is, well, we don't want a parking lot two blocks away. That's not uh, good. But, um, but if the parking lot's right next to the facility, that probably is better. No, we don't have that luxury at all anywhere um, of having a park next to every facility. <laughs> no, but like, you know, even City Hall has 
a spot right out front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is the action to refer this to other committees? Is that or like just to get feedback on this first or? Yeah, I think if there's any refinement we want okay. to do as a committee, I know beyond that, the committee previously said, let's also get it to Ped by Transit. Mm -hmm. If you want also then to go into committee on aging, um, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. I, that's up to the committee. Yeah, you know, I think getting it to Ped by Transit and Aging Committee is fine. And if their input, because they'll take the time and the effort and everything else to really hopefully look at this document and then get back to us. Because we can make changes now and only to have them changed again. Yeah, that's also why I wanted to maybe send it to the plan as well. Yeah, plan commission as well. Sure. Since they're going to be yeah. looking forward yeah. on this. So. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be a recommendation. Um, do we need a motion on that, Sean? Or just a recommendation? Uh, if you want to give that guidance, a, a referral definitely should have a, yeah. a, a, motion. A, a motion. But if you're also then willing to say you're generally satisfied with it and referring it, that's helpful too to pass along to those other committees. Yeah. You're looking at me. I can make them. <laughs> um, well, of course, committee is in general in concurrence with the document that you created. However, we would prefer it or would like it to be sent to Ed Bike Transit, Committee for the Aging, and the Plan Commission for their review and comments back to. Sound okay, ever? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll second that. That's amazing. Hey, I did. It is. <laughs> Great. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda, liaison briefings. Uh, Brandon. Yeah, uh, we met recently for Conservancy Lands Committee, July 31st, kind of went through the capital and operational budgets, similar to the way we did it here, and approved those along with the personnel request. Um, the only other item talked about May, well, we did get a staff report. There's a lot of uh, public meetings right going on right now to talk about the Conservancy Lands uh, planning. I think, David, maybe you know the name of that. It's uh, They're meeting at different parks to get public input for their, for their planning, Conservancy yep. planning. They've been holding public sessions at a variety of our parks and yeah. spaces around town. So the so they reported back on what kind of uh, feedback we were getting on those. Um, and that's about all I have. All right. Carrie, Pet Bike and Transit. Fortunately, I do not have an update because I have not been able to make the most recent meeting. I've been on vacation. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Done. My, I have my marching orders in color. I'll make sure Eric gets that on the agenda for the next time. Okay. For discussion purposes. All right. Uh, that concludes liaison briefings. Uh, future meeting agenda items. Let's just go around. Brandon. Uh, no, nothing for me. Carrie. None. Kim. None. Dave. None. Don. Nothing. Uh, I'll add uh, one item, which uh, is a uh, discussion of um, that same uh, policy question that you're going to raise over on oh, water. Okay. Um, Culvert maintenance. Yeah. Culvert maintenance. When 
associated with the drainage ditch. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I have nothing. We have reached the end of our noticed agenda. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon. See ya. Yeah, adaptive restoration has been going around with.